What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is Legends of Tomorrow Season 3, Episode 7, Welcome to the Jungle. So, in this episode we have a pretty interesting episode. Uh, we've got Gorilla Grodd shows up in Vietnam, during the Vietnam War. So the team goes back there to get him out of there. Mick meets his father because apparently he was fighting in the Vietnam War. We get a little bit more insight into why Mick hated his father so much, why he decided to kill him. And... Yeah, then Damien Dark somehow gets Gorilla Grodd out of there using his little stone uh, that he's been using to tra travel through time. And that's pretty much it. You know, it's it's a fairly straightforward episode, but it's still very enjoyable. You know, a lot of fun moments. Getting to see Mick and his father interacting is a lot of fun because they're pretty much just cut from the same cloth. You know, all these little scenes where they're both grunting at the same time. Uh, there's one point where his father's unit goes into Grodd's little camp uh, where Ray and Zari and Amaya are all waiting because they all broke in trying to talk to him. And so Ray is trying to talk to Mick's dad just like, you know, hey, look, the president, he's he's in trouble. We got to save him. And the whole time Mick's just going, shut up, shut up, shut up. And then finally his father just goes, shut up. He's like, see, I told you. <laughs> so it's just it's kind of funny to see how similar the two were um but yeah it did give us some more insight into Mick's story there's a nice little moment at the end of it where uh he and Nate had sort of been talking about it throughout the episode um because you know Nate is trying to get through to Mick and of course Mick it just he's not a feeling person so he's just shutting him off cutting cutting him off every single time until the end of the episode where finally, you know, he and his father have a nice little moment together. And uh, Nate goes to give him the lighter back. He said, no, nah, I don't need that anymore. So, I don't know. I just, I feel like, I don't feel like Mick's character is going to change that much. Because frankly, yeah, I, I don't see him changing at all. Because he's, he's going to be Mick Rory. That's always going to be his character. If they changed him, he would be a slightly less interesting character. But what I do think is this might help him grow a little bit more as a character. Because right now, all he really is is just the comic relief. You know, he's there to act dumb, have some funny one-liners, and intimidate people. That's pretty much it. Aside from that, he's not really that big of a character in the team. So I, I do hope this makes him a little bit more interesting as a character. Obviously, don't change his personality because a lot of it is still funny. You know, I haven't heard him call Ray haircut in a while, so... I'm going, I really do hope he can sort of get back into that sort of feeling of being a, an antagonistic character on the team. Uh, but as far as the rest of the episode, you know, like I said, it's Gorilla Grodd in Vietnam War. That's a pretty interesting setup. You know, it was, it was very interesting to see the, um, his sort of little plan. We see how all of a sudden Mick's dad's unit comes upon this one soldier that went missing. And so he's like, what? Petey, you know, come on, let's let's go back to the to the camp, and then he says, you know, I've, you're you're going to be enlightened just like me, you know, come with me. So at that point, you can kind of see that they're all being mind controlled because Rod wants them to come together under him, you know, and that's kind of his whole plan is to stop the fighting between the U.S. and the Vietnam because he wants peace, but he wants people to be slaves as well. So it's kind of it's a little bit interesting to see the uh, the contrast between stopping these people from fighting each other, but also wanting to be a ruler. It's almost like you know you kind of side with them in the whole yeah let's stop the fighting because the, we all know the Vietnam War was a terrible war in the first place, but at the same time it's also kind of like you know you're trying to be a dictator, so why can't we have one and not the other? <laughs> why is it you gotta have two sides of this, but I don't know, it was, it was kind of interesting to see his little plan there. Uh, I will also say it does sort of make me think, going back to The Flash, I know it's weird to think these two shows actually tie together because most of the time they seem so connect or disconnected, but I will say the fact that this one soldier said something about becoming enlightened, and we just had an episode where the thinker was talking about The Flash and his team becoming enlightened. It does make me think that his, his plan might possibly have to do with mind control. You know, I theorize that might have something to do with it, but now that I'm seeing this guy act this way under Grodd's mind control, I'm thinking that that's probably going to be the thinker's plan. So, 
I don't know, just interesting to see that the plot for another one of these shows in the same universe kind of ties into the plot of this one as well. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, aside from that, it's pretty straightforward. You know, you got the team working together trying to stop it. It was interesting to see that they did pretty well without Sarah's help. You know, they didn't actually create any problems in all of this. Uh, most of the time it's like, oh, the anachronism is like a level eight, so we got this. And then they show up and then they do something stupid. Now it's like, oh, now it's a level 15. What happened? Uh, so it was interesting to see that they actually didn't do anything to raise the level. It did raise at one point, but it's only because Grodd started controlling you know, the president. Not the president, but he started controlling all these people. Got the president over, over the Vietnam War. So, you know, just little things that Grodd was doing was raising the level. But the team themselves actually didn't make any big mistakes. So I thought that was very interesting. Especially because Sarah was not captain in this episode. Now whether or not that has anything to say about her leadership or whether the team's just gotten that good to where they can operate without her and not make any mistakes, I don't know. Uh, but another interesting thing about this episode, something that was just sort of thrown in at the beginning and then not discussed at all later, uh, Rory reveals that Zari didn't take Helen back to Troy. That he took her to Themyscira. So... Yeah, they just sort of threw that in. Everybody on the team knows, except for Sarah, because she wakes up just at the end of the episode. Uh, but they said, you know, okay, we'll talk about this later whenever Sarah wakes up. So I'll be interested to see where that's going to go. You know, are they going to punish her for it? Are they going to say, yeah, maybe it was a good idea if it didn't change anything in the timeline? I don't know. You know, like I've said before in the last episode, it's hard to say how the show wants us to feel about time travel. You know, one episode they could be telling us time travel doesn't really matter because they make all of these changes. You know, these people know about the future, know about time travel, but then nothing changes, so who cares? And then there's these other episodes where something happens and then they're just like, oh, we can't do that, it'll mess up the timeline. So it's hard to really tell how the show wants us to feel about time travel. They keep going back and forth on the importance of it and then making it seem like it's not important at all. You know, that it's just... Yeah, whatever. So, I don't know. I'm still... The jury's still out for me on how I feel about this whole time travel stuff. You know, how am I supposed to feel about it? The show still doesn't let me know. It's still going back and forth in its own opinion on how time travel... How important it is. So, it's just a, a little thing thrown in there. I suppose in the next episode they'll talk about it a little bit more. Well, actually, after the whole crossover event. But... Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how they're going to tie into the crossover event this time and all that stuff. So that's about it for me. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on this episode? Let me know what we can talk about and discuss all the good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe future Legends of Tomorrow reviews. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.